Hello, everyone. How are we doing so far? How is Helsinki? Good energy? Awesome, awesome. I'm very happy to be here, and I'm very happy to be talking to you guys today. So we have a very special topic for you, something you're all very familiar with, human behavior. Now, you might be wondering, why are we talking about human behavior? So it should be all very obvious to you why we do things that we do. But it turns out that human behavior is rarely what it seems, right? And the interesting thing is we've done great progress with data. We can understand our DNA better. You know, we can understand illnesses and diseases better. But actually, we have made very little progress in understanding human behavior, why we do things that we do. Now, think about an evening. You know, you came back from uni or from a hard day at work, and you were so determined to read that book. And then you all of a sudden find yourself that you are playing Red Dead Redemption for like five hours or something, and you just end up doing things that you did not necessarily plan. Now, why is that important? Because any company, any brand who is trying to bring products to the market for you will always try to understand why you do things that you do. And they are really struggling with that at the moment. Imagine your toothpaste in your bathroom. Does it really speak to you? Do you feel like, oh my god, this toothpaste is totally built for me? The problem is if you don't, it becomes a commodity. It's not anymore a brand that actually communicates a message to you, and then they get easily disrupted right, by those who do. Now, here is the really harsh reality. The world, the consumer brands today, spend $44 billion every year to understand you. Right? They are basically spending all that money on research just to understand the human behavior. Yet, 80% of growth in consumer goods comes from outside the top four companies who are dominating the space. And then they easily get disrupted by the likes of Dollar Shave Club. Why? Because we talked earlier, if the brand is not actually communicating a message to you that is personalized, that really talks to you, then the problem is you are just going to buy whatever is the most convenient and cheapest, potentially, product on the market is. Now, let's come back to why is it so complex? to understand human behavior, and what can we do about it? Here is the beautiful nature of our brain. I don't know if you admitted this to yourself yet, you know, maybe after some therapy sessions, that we are conflicting individual beings. We are not consistent. We are not always rational. We have conflicting and contradicting demands in our brain, some of which are completely unconscious and not even known to us. So the worst way to learn why someone does what they do is to ask them. Because they will give you an answer that is rational and they believe it's true, but actually there are other things at play in your brain which intervenes. Habits, emotions, your context, they all change your behavior. So think about a day for like a 20-year, 8-year-old woman you know, she's so believing in the exercising and eating healthy. You come home. If I ask you what are you going to eat tonight, genuinely, you will tell me broccolis. But we all know you're not going to eat those broccolis. And you might have had a really hard day at work, and you actually end up just grabbing the ice cream from the freezer, and then maybe just having some, you know, Netflix, and actually getting some maybe Halo Top even, one of those really exciting new ice creams in the market, right? So what happened there? What happened in my brain, right? There's one part of my brain which is telling me that I should do this. There's another part of my brain which says, I want to do this. And they fight. Sometimes one wins, sometimes the other one wins. So how do we reveal that? How do we decode this behavior, right? Now, the traditional market research which brands usually rely on, remember that $44 billion? that are being spent on that market research, we used to ask people. And we thought that people would be able to tell us the reality. People would be able to tell us what's actually going on. It turns out that's not the case. Hence, a lot of the major brands today are not growing. What we need to do instead is chat with them. 
like your friends, right? That's what you do all day long. We are on WhatsApp or like any other chat apps, and we talk to our friends. And we reveal what we want, we, re we reveal our emotions, and we talk to them, basically. And this is the reason why the only way to understand human behavior is actually to let people talk to us in their own words. Because as you speak, what we will be able to discover is tensions, frustrations, right? Conflicting desires in your brain. Without noticing, you are going to reveal that. You are going to say things like, oh, I actually thought I should do this, but instead I went for this. I had a banana in my bag for a snack, but then I saw Pringles. I went for that instead. And this is the reason why. Now, here is the beautiful thing about technology. Street Beats is a natural language processing business where we built a way, a mechanism, to be able to establish when there is tension, when there is frustration, or unmet needs in our deep thinking. With the deep neural networks we trained in the last four years, today we can detect when your mind is actually assessing different competing powers in your brain, and then one of them is going to lead to the result. How does that work? You have an app, StreetBees app, it's in the App Store. That's the extent of promotion I'm going to do today. And you can actually go to the app, and then you can start talking to us. You can talk to a video, you can write in a chat box, or you can just take images, right? That's it. It's unstructured. We get all this unstructured data, and then it goes into a funnel where we start processing the information to establish what is it that you really want? What is it that you are trying to achieve? What is it that, that matters to you? Now, here's the difference between human power versus artificial intelligence. On the left-hand side here, you see after we got, in this particular example, over like a 1,000 uh, logs, we call them logs, basically the chats that we got from our users, and a human, a very expert researcher, analyzed them. Right? That's the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, what you're seeing is that um, you have the machine learning one, where we just did that using our deep neural networks. Now, one difference is 126 hours of one person's time, which is obviously not scalable, versus you're talking about 30 seconds. But that's not really the key thing here. The machine was able to decode emotions that human was not able to. Because we are not trained in our brains to be able to see conflict and contradiction, whereas our deep neural networks are. So it would easily be able to differentiate that, oh, you are tired, as in you are sick of this tired, versus you are tired, as in you need to go to sleep tired. In both cases, the human, the consumer might have said, I'm tired, but the machine can decode what type of tired are you actually are. Now, what does that mean? Obviously, this, this means a huge, amount, a huge amount for the brands because they can now understand why you do things that you do, what do they need to do to be able to bring products to the market that would be relevant for you. But the implications are far-reaching from that. In a recent study, we established 60% of eating behavior in the US studies happens because of, wait for it, it's not hunger. Any guesses? 60% of eating behavior, what could it be? Stress, I heard stress. Very close, very close, it's loneliness, right? You're talking about 60% of a nation admitting that their eating behavior, 60% of the time, is triggered by loneliness. It obviously matters that we know those things because not only the brands, but also governments, health organizations can intervene to be able to help these national level problems we are talking about. As a result, what you see here is that 25% of our behavior is, you know, formally speaking, rational. It's based on our aspirations, our, you know, needs to be do the right thing, etc. It's only one quarter of the picture. 
45%, almost 44%, is due to our context. You behave differently if your friends are right next to you versus if you are at home alone. And 30% is about your inner self, your emotions, and your behavior. To be able to decode the human behavior, StreetBees is a deep technology business, started building an operating platform, as you can see the stack here. So the data comes in, and then you have a data pro uh, processing layer. And on top of that, over time, we have built the ontologies to be able to decipher when people say this, they mean that. When they talk like that, that indicates a tension. What is the tension? How do we get into the tension? The reason why I mentioned that is because we are opening our operating platform to other applications, whoever also wants to understand the human behavior and decode the real reasons why we do things that we do, they are very welcome to use our operating platform. I'm just going to finish up with one of the examples we have been working earlier this year. Um, you know, we talked about Red Dead Redemption earlier, not for just no reason. Um, it's one of the most popular games. How many gamers I have in the room? Show me, no gamers? Yes, I can see a few. So you would be familiar with this. People come back home and they start playing games maybe after 6 p.m. through to the night, right? And what happens in that period is that you don't want to take a break for dinner. It's boring. Who's going to do that, right? So you want to stay playing games. Your hands need to be on the console. So while you are doing that, you go into sequential snacking, as we now call it. This behavior was completely detected with our deep neural networks to understand how the new generation of gamers are experiencing food and beverage. How do they snack? What do they need from their snacks? Number one learning was that a lot of snacking companies offer us solutions today which are admittedly greasy. The problem with grease beyond the healthcare issues is that it makes your hands greasy, so you can't put the hands back on the console. And this is the kind of insights that you are able to get with this deep kind of work that you would not get otherwise with my you know, traditional market research. So as a result of that, now the companies know if they want to speak to the gamers, they will actually go for a sequential you know, snacking alternative that is not greasy. Thanks so much for your patience, guys. And if there are any other questions, I'm going to be actually in the backstage. Come find me. Thank you.